Hi tailors! In this video I'm gonna share with you a full lesson from my practical online bespoke trouser making course on how to make side adjusters from scratch without using any fusible interlining. Don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram. I post their tailoring tips, small tutorials, I answer your questions and also we just communicate there a lot. So let's get to tailoring. In this video we are gonna make side adjusters or side tabs if you wish. I put them on all trousers I make by default unless the customer insists on belt loops. The main idea behind bespoke trousers is that they are cut to fit your waist and there is no need in using a belt to keep them in place. And also our body measurements change not only within months but throughout a day give or take a few centimeters and that is where side tabs come in handy adjusting the size of a waistband. There are different styles and manufacturing methods of side adjusters. For example they could be made out of two pieces stitched together or they could be made of one piece of cloth. And that is the type we are going with. As you can see styles and shapes can be diverse but honestly these four I have quickly drafted just before this lesson because mainly I use only this one. I like its shape, it fits my buckles, its adjusters go on all the trousers I make. Download my free template below and transfer it onto a cardboard. And if you want to make your own one, the main rule is that this extension has to fit the buckle you're using. This buckle is 2 cm wide, so I make the extension 1 or 2 mm narrower, 18-19 mm, because we have to take the fabric thickness into consideration. And past this line here you can create any shape you like, as long as your extension fits the buckle nicely. And after you find your favorite shape and style, I recommend you stick into it to make them perfectly every time. Ok, let's get to work. So here is a leftover piece and as you can see by the salvage it is obviously on grain. Take a cardboard template and chalk out the core of our longer piece first. Here I'm adding a 1 cm seam allowance. And to the sides I'm adding 2 cm. And also extra 5 mm here. Here is 2 cm seam allowance. 1, 1, 1, 1 another 2 cm seam allowance and 5 mm here. So this is the longer piece. To make the shorter one I use these notches and then I'm doing all the same. You may also create another template that includes seam allowances to speed up the process. And this set of parts is only for one side of the trousers so I recommend you cutting all four at the same time, two short and two longer ones. Two parts are cut and now it's time to reinforce them. Here are multiple options. You may fuse the whole piece or if you want this extension to be thinner and if you got rather thick fabric, you may just reinforce only this part. I have medium weight fabric, so I'm gonna reinforce the whole piece. I'm sure you know how to use fusibles, so I'm gonna show you a rather intricate method that you may later simplify with some fusible interlining if you wish. Here is a piece of non-fusible interlining. It feels like paper a little bit and it works great because the stiff texture will give us crisp edges. Chalk out the interlining using the same cardboard template.
and baste the interlining onto the cloth several millimeters from the reinforcement's edge. So both of them are secured, give a light press and then fold it in half. And here is where I'm going to stitch those allowances one centimeter from the edge. Press the seam flat after the machining and then press it open. Trim the seam allowance just a bit, several millimeters. Keeping those allowances inside also adds some stability, thickness and volume to the adjuster's extension. And the last machine stitch that goes only to the longer piece is around 7 or 10 millimeters from its end and has to catch at least 5 millimeters of the interlining. Trim corners so they won't get bulky after turning. Ok, it's done. Use a chopstick to carefully turn them inside out. Trim a bit this part, but not too close to the reinforcement piece. And continue folding and pressing allowances inside, using the hard edges of interlining to shape the cloth. Use a clapper to absorb the heat with the moisture and secure the shape. Next, quality control, everything fits nicely. And you do all the same for a shorter one, but leaving the extensions end unstitched. You may baste pressed allowances to make the attachment process a bit easier. Buckles also have right and wrong sides. This is the right side and here where these regulators are turned inside is the wrong one. Keep an eye on that because if you mess it up you'll probably have to remake at least one tab. Let's start assembling. Here is our waistband and it hasn't been lined yet. I've seen adjusters being attached onto a fully finished pair of trousers, but honestly I'm not a huge fan of this technique. So as a rule I place the center of the buckle so it approximately divides the side pocket facing in half. And regarding its placement on the waistband, if you have a rather wide waistband like we do, Four centimeters, we may place adjusters in its center, like this. But if you are using a standard 3.5 cm waistband, there is an option to shift it a bit lower, like this for example. You may also baste the tabs to secure their position and prevent them from moving during the attachment, but I'll just pin them this time.
There are different methods of attaching the adjusters. A fully machined method that is mostly used on chinos. A combined one when only this seam is machined and the rest is hand finished. And 100% hand stitching. And that is what we are gonna do. There is a debate that hand finished method is unreliable and doesn't withstand tension, but I will prove that wrong. Here are the areas that absorb the most stress. So we finish them with a high density stab stitch. Secure the thread on the wrong side. Drive the needle onto the right side and then stab one millimeter behind the place where the thread comes out like this. Watch the hand finishing process and try repeating it on your side adjusters. As soon as you reach the end of the first stitch, drive the needle onto the right side and switch onto slip stitch. Both adjusters are hand finished and pressed and as you can see they work properly even without machine stitching. So in this video I try to give you as much information as possible about making the side tabs. So if you have any questions left leave them in the comment section or DM me on my Instagram. I'll see you at the cutting table very soon.